they might have, I don't know. But at the time that I left, when I was 17 and a half years old, they were in the process of talking about uh, chaining me in the house to the bed, and I was going to be raped because I was going to be sold as a prostitute that way because they wanted to start making money. I had resisted going on stage and having a little piece of fame and fortune, you know, that, and that's what they wanted from me, and, and I just kind of played dumb often enough that they didn't uh, get any kind of money that way. And even my album I put out, uh, Dressed in Love, uh, and my stage name then was Layla Christ because Eric actually named me Layla when I first met him. Uh, I didn't get anything from that either because the Nazis would have got it. And I believe that what Eric did is he had a hundred copies of it made and it was just like a special thing. And one of them also went to uh, Bob Jones, you know, Foreign Intelligence, and a little bit of other stuff went to him, the uh, Beers Diamond shoot that, that I did with Eric and Carlos Lowe. It was two different commercial things we did. And uh, just a little bit of stuff like that, you know. What is your obsession with children, Debbie? Why children? Why are there rituals to cut out unborn fetuses and have sex with them, as we discussed in our last interview? Why is there a need for these people to attack children sexually and physically? I believe the more they can be repulsive to the human race, the more they can disgust and, and shock the human mind for what they do, uh, the more sexual thrill they get out of it because they are in control. If they see us scared, they are in control. If they see us stand up to them and cuss them out, they kind of back down. It's taking control away from them to withstand them, see. And uh, they can't be brutal enough to saddest. They don't see enough blood to be satisfied. They never get satisfaction. What's this, Jared? talked to me about this in the interview, and he said the more perverted the sex, the more demonic power they can summon. Do you yeah. feel that's a possibility? Yeah, and the more innocent the victim, also I believe that. See, the, uh, the baby boy that I saw uh, cut out of, of, of a woman uh, when I was probably barely six years old, and it may have been Halloween, they did that to be a lasting shock to my mind, and uh, it was. It's it's one of the things that I'll always be haunted for uh, for the rest of my life, you know. And it, it's supposed to make our brain go kind of haywire. Well, it does. It, it does fry a part of us. Our, our emotions and our, our mentality is hurt. We're just devastated over these kind of things. And we, we feel pain on our own body. But then we see what happens to other people. And what happens to other people, if we are human, it affects us too. It hurts us to see other people in pain. But they tried to stop that. That's part of a secular humanist uh, agenda. Stop us from emotions. Stop us from caring about other people, you know. And they wanted to break us that way. But how can people watch a, a newborn baby slaughtered and other children beg for their life and not cry and not have emotions? They couldn't force us to be secular humanists like them. You know, we remained with a human heart, and we only did because of God being with us, I'm sure. I learned Jesus before I learned devil is what I always said, and, and I'm just glad I did because I had that to hang on to. Um, I have no idea how this would have ended in my life. I don't think I'd be alive if uh, for very long if I hadn't learned about Jesus while I was growing up, you know, and then start learning devil. And you can't learn one without learning uh, the other, you know, according to the Bible. If you don't read your Bible, you're going to learn a little bit about each one, right? But yeah. Yes, and oh, I thank God that I found Jesus very early in life. I know he's not for everybody, but he is really for me. And the kindness and his strength and the hope that he gave me helped me make it through the rapes as an adult. I, I can't imagine how you dealt with this as a child. And I'm so glad that he was there for you, that you had that, that to hang on to. Why do you think they try to shock you? Is it to shock you into a split personality? Somebody different? Uh, yes, the, the more they, the more damage they can do, and split personality is part of a, a mental damage. If they can keep damaging us emotionally and uh, mentally, then we are mentally disturbed people or anyone they split, um, and we're not good witnesses uh, because of the split and the personality changes and stuff. Now, I've been around a little bit of people like that, uh, not a whole lot, but a little bit. 
that's another thing that Eric and Carlos wanted to know. When I first met them, I told them, I said, look, these people are trying to split us. You just make us into two people. Don't let, you know, resist it. As long as you know what's going on, you can resist it. I learned, because I had good people around me that actually explained to me, because I would say, how come kids that don't know go by me and they take all their fingertips right down my forehead and my nose and my chin and real hard sometimes and scratch me and they have it just split? And then grown people and people I don't know and the people I lived with. And I wanted to know what does it mean and I was told they're trying to split your personality. So I had good people that love Jesus that was explaining to me that they were trying to make me split. So I was capable and prepared to make sure that I didn't split as much pain as I was in sometimes and beat up and, and laying there crying, you know. I was determined not to split, and again, I had Jesus to think about, and I had good memories, you know. I had flowers and nature and the things that I was interested in, and I held real fast to my personal interest in life, you know, God being the foremost, and animals, and, and you know, nature and stuff like that, and reading, and, and good movies, and, and I'm not much of a TV person, but the things that I liked, and, and that's where my mind would go, whether than my mind goes shatter like they wanted it to. I think a lot of the organized stalking victims who hear the voices are probably being, trying to be programmed. I would say people are trying to program them to have a split personality. I know I have uh, a man that I interview, his name is James Walbert, and he tells me all they talk about is sex every night. Sex, 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 sex. The voices that we get and I think the reason they do that is because they're trying to create the split personalities. And I've talked to you about the radio frequency and the voices, and you seem to think that's what they're doing as well, and that's why they wait sometimes. I know they wait for me to go to sleep, and then they start. And I've read that they can work with hypnotists when you hit a certain stage of sleep to try to program you. What do you think? I mean, you and I have talked about this personally before in, in other conversations, but... What do you think? Do you think that's the purpose of the voices? Well, it's um, it's stress. It's meant to make you know they are always there. They know every move you make. They're with you at all times. You're never alone. And they're breathing down your neck, literally, as, you know, like they used to do me. And so they want you reminded of that. That's why they stay on you that way, you know. But see, that's how it started out with my real mother, too, was the voices in the attic. But back then, they had to get up there when you ain't home and put their wire with a microphone on the end of it up there. Well, I think it's, one, you start telling people you hear voices. They're going to mm-hmm. label you as mentally ill. But, two, I do think that there's um, some level of trying to change you, trying to develop a second personality. So I think you're right. It could have both capabilities. Yeah. I know when I hear these voices, I can't stand it because I can't stand anything they say. And I, I know they're trying to change my personality. And they do tell me, you're not going to love anyone, you're not going to care about anyone, and I'm never going to change. I don't care how I feel. I'm always going to be kind to a child or help someone in need. I know I help a lot of targets who contact me, and they help me as well, because talking to somebody else who's going through this who understands is a great uplifting feeling. It just it makes you feel like there's hope. So they're not going to change me, and most of the people who are still suffering daily, obviously they're not changing them either. And the torture goes on and on and on. They don't seem to stop. They do not go away. I just can't believe somebody would want to waste their life away 24 hours a day waiting for me to lay down. The minute I lay down to take a nap or anything, they're right there. Mm -hmm. It's like they have a camera. Well, I know they must have a camera here somewhere. They wouldn't be able to see me. They have a lot of different equipment, very advanced technology. They can see through the wall. There's heat signatures, there's voice to skull, there's microwave hearing, radio frequency, chips. A lot of people have been implanted. I heard it can take a matter of seconds. They can hit you with an implant gun, and you can feel a sting in your leg and not know what it was, and you've had a chip implanted in you that's the size of a grain of rice. I've read that. How scary is that? 
Yeah, pretty scary. And then they can track you. 